Good afternoon, old 64 goat here, the old fart of Connecticut. I got the tube tester cabinet on the workbench out here. And I've got some quarter inch Luan little pieces here that I've always save everything. You know, I keep these inside the shed. And what I got here, I got this glued down here. This has been sitting for a couple hours now. So I got a, a one piece glued in here like this. And um, what I'm going to do is a bondo this. I'm going to bondo fill this in. Now I could have cut this square, you know, with my uh, Harbor Freight multi-function tool and put a piece of wood in there, but I'd still have to fill it in with wood filler. Now on this part here, what I'm going to do to that is very simple. Is I'm going to take another piece and I'm going to glue it right like that. You're not going to see that inside. So when that, it'll be like this on the outside. And then I'll just fill all that in. And these will just stay in there. They don't take up any space inside the cabinet. And there's a slight musty smell, but it isn't all that bad. So we're going to put this back up here. Let that continue. The glue is dry, but I want to keep the weight on it anyways. And I had a little piece over here that I glued at the same time a few hours ago. And that was broken away. So I fixed that. And then I got the tube tester sitting out here to get some, um, you know, sun in it. This is very musty when I put my face very close to it, I can smell this. These are plastic here. I can't get too close because I got the Kodak ZE-1. These are plastic and I cleaned the outside but it's all um, fungi inside. Now I can either disconnect all the wires, which I'm not going to do, or I can slice it very gently down with a razor blade and take these things right off of here. And they keep the wires organized because I can't get inside there to clean them. Uh, on the power transformer, if you notice, there's a light film on here. Uh, that's oil. Very, very light film of oil. I put it on with my fingers and a Q-tip. And I did the same to the core of the transformer here. As much as I could, it was rusted, but not real bad. It was surface rust. And the pilot lights do work they just didn't show up on the on the video now i was looking at a restoration video uh calibration video um can't remember his name bob's tv or something like that uh, i i could be mistaken it's one of the one of the fellows i i watch a lot he works on a lot of televisions and stuff and i can't recall his channel name but he has the 600D. This has no model number. Um, but he says the calibration control, which I know is right here, according to the procedure for that, it's a little different than the way I was gonna do it. I was just gonna adjust that until the meter read what my BNK 606 read and, and call it good and adjust the line control or center but the way he did it is using this and adjusting your line control uh, line control set it for 6v6 I don't have the book on this so I don't know the exact procedure in addition to that his right between those four big sockets right there he has a um, Novista socket right in the middle this one don't have it so i don't think this is a 600d i don't know what model this is because there is no model number on it but it looks very similar to the one he was working on so anyways i want to let this get as much sun as i i can get on it but it's very musty it's smelling here and these are put together as kits as i said and i knew that 
and some of these pins were touching the way it was soldered. So I got in there with my uh, eye lope and a, and a lot of light and I, I uh, moved things around to make sure nothing was shorting out here. So we're going to just let that set. I'm going to set you up on a tripod and um, I'm going to put another piece of wood in, in there and I got to turn this over and put the weight against that. And then when I'm done with that, I might stop at my hardware store and ask them. I, I think shellac inside this here, on the inside only, you know, all the way through in here, will capture the smell. It'll keep it away. But it's not all that bad. Actually, this is more musty in here smelling than uh, the cabinet. And there is, I have no idea what made that hole. Uh, one of my viewers said it's probably a rat. Uh, I, I don't think so. That's quarter inch. This is quarter inch plywood here. This isn't. This is like a uh, press board. But that's quarter inch plywood, and uh, that was that was cut right through. But if there was rat there, these wires would be chewed up. Nothing. No problem with any um, wires in there. You know, wires would be chewed on, and there'd be rat turds and everything else in there and, and there wasn't there was a lot of dirt but no no rat turds before i get started on this i want to give you a quick shot of bob's radio um which is now in the car and i got to meet him wednesday i got his radio uh, the second coil wound on the antenna loop and the radio's working really well. I can't show it to you, it's in the car now, but I can show you the front with the paper dial, just to show you, you know, it don't look too, too bad. Bob's gonna do the grill cloth and the cabinet and everything else. Uh, I don't have any grill cloth and I don't have enough materials to do anything with the cabinet. So let me take you over to the car and show you that. Okay, as you can see, the dial don't look all that bad, of course, you have to reach in the back and tune it because the dial cord's broken. Bob's got the identical radio that he bought on eBay. It's in cosmetically much better shape and the dial cord is working. So he's gonna try to copy and try to string it. So what I did on the antenna, this is the antenna coil from his other radio and uh, you can see the very thin wire there. Now, that reads um, three and a half ohms. That's a second coil. You can't see it on this, but I rewound this coil with heavier wire, and it only reads 0.2 ohms, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's two turns, the radio works, then that's good enough. So let me get you on a tripod here and we'll resume with this project here. And only I can do today is to put that piece of wood in there and this will have to dry overnight. Why oh, these damn motorcycles gotta go by every time I do a video. So I'll put another piece of wood in there on the other side as I showed you. I'll get you on a tripod here, and then I gotta let that set with the weight on it. And then I can uh, use Bondo on the other side and, and finish it. Uh, before I start doing that, I'm gonna try to see if I can wire brush these here. They're very, very rusty. And see if I can clean them up enough to get some kind of a paint on them or something but I doubt very highly it's, I'm going to be able to get all the rust off. I could try um, navel jelly, I do have that, but none of this rust remover stuff and neutralizer ever worked. It never worked on the big van. I've used all kinds of stuff and all it does is turn it black and the rust continues to eat through after you paint it and you know prime it and paint it. And it, and it comes through anyway, so yeah, that stuff does not work. Uh, so I think we'll just sand it and uh, I'll put some Rust-Oleum, I have some Rust-Oleum oil base um, that I'll put on these 
paint them black. And uh, these here aren't too bad. They're like a light, a light rust. So those aren't too bad. Okay, let me get you on a tripod. That's the worst one right here. That is, that is very, 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 very corroded. I'm on digital zoom, so don't expect quality. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little masking tape around this so it won't scrape too much on this. That is really bad. That's about as bad as I've ever seen rust on a on a latch before. get about you know maybe half the rust off we'll come back in a minute here I don't know how well you'll be able to see that but I cleaned it as best I could I got some of this uh, rust oleum oil base smoke gray I've used it on other things including the Sprague Telemike T05 front panel so I don't have any black I have latex, I won't use that junk on metal. And I'm going to paint these here after I clean this off with paint thinner first to get some of that rust off of there. I'm not going to bother with the um, navel jelly because then I got to wait till the next day. I like to do everything and get it done. I'm, I'm in a that's why when I do body work I just bang bang bang. I just want to get it done. I don't like waiting. I don't like sanding. You know. Oh, This is the worst one. This one over here isn't as bad. Let's see. Move my finger there make sure you're in view here. I do that because I can't see the viewfinder until I see my hand moving, then I know this is where I want to be. Alright, so we got to put a little tape around that one too. 
so we don't and we can leave the tape on there until I'm done painting. grit sandpaper on it it was really covered with rust it still is but uh, it's a lot better than it was see it's shiny under here so I don't need to worry too much about that but we're going to paint the whole thing anyways And then when these are painted, then I'll go and do the uh, block of wood on the inside because that's got to set overnight with the weight on it. Or at least, at least wise till the sun goes down, then I can take the weight off and I can put the whole thing in my shed because I don't want no, the dew or anything to get on this sitting out here. here on a, on a rag to get some of that rust loose rust off of there you're not going to get it any better than this I should take the damn thing off and sandblast it <laughs> I don't have a sandblaster and I wouldn't do it if I could it's not worth it I just want to get this thing looking good in the old goat fashion. neutralize the mustiness. sand the other two pieces over here. I'll do that off camera. You don't need to watch every step of the way here. All right, I'm ready to paint here. I wanted black, but this is the best I can do. I got the tape all around all four sides of this, so there won't be any problem with getting paint on the surface here. really well. Like I say, I'd rather have used black, but I don't have any black. This ain't covering too good at all. Stir it up a little more here.
Probably have to cut a couple coats on here. Being that this is oil based, it's going to take a while before I can put a second coat on. This one's covering better. completely upside down for obvious reasons but we'll paint this way This is the one that wasn't too rusty, but it was rusty. This is the real rusted one. I cleaned all these off with uh, mineral spirits. I'd say it'd be a lot better than what's the old catch. Right. Okay. As you can see, we're looking pretty decent. I think if I'm very careful, I'll turn this up here like this, and we'll. Am I still in camera here? Yeah. Very careful, we'll put a piece of wood in here. I mean I can cut it, I might cut it the same length as this, but it's cosmetic. You're not going to see it inside. Uh, this is not an even cut, so we'll turn it this way. And uh, we'll take our handsaw and cut that. Alright, we'll cut that off there. And that's all she wrote. All right. Okay, so we know where to put the glue. or anything else, we just put the weight on it. That's it. I'll just let her dry and I'll probably leave that out here. Uh, let me see what time it is here. It's uh, 
3.16 p.m. So I think uh, at least two hours. Till the sun goes down, I'll, 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 uh, I'll leave this on there like that. And uh, if this, these hinges and catches and so forth are, are tacky or, you know, not too tacky, I should say, I'll put a second coat on them. Because this thing's going to stay open like this. I'm not putting a tube tester back in there right away. I want to I want to put a coat of shellac or something on the inside of that. And then I want to do something uh, before I even do that. I want to put in um, do the bondo, mix up a small amount of bondo, but I'll do that another day and uh, get it so it's like this up on top here. All right, I, uh, I'm putting a second coat on. Nothing fancy. Just very slightly tacky. I ain't gonna worry about it. I'll just put a second coat on it, then I don't have to deal with it tomorrow. And uh, we'll leave this set here. And uh, we got a weight on here inside for the bottom piece of wood. So that's got a that's got a set. Take a look at the cover. Maybe I have to do the hinges on that too. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to sand these down. I'm going to do that off camera. This one's not too bad. And this. And then here, I'll just put some of that carpenter's wood glue in there and close that down as much as I can. You know, you got a corner here that's off. But overall, it's not too bad a shape. We'll do that off camera. All right. Now we're going to paint the latches and the you know, the other side. This has got mostly all the chrome on it. I sanded as much as I could to roughen it up. So, what do here? That's pretty dirty. We can't have that. Got dirty from the bench. All right. Nothing like a big long paint stick for a short, small can. You made a paint stick, huh? This is just from the Venetian blinds. I save everything, so I make, you know, use them for paint stirrers. They're handy for that. For the small cans. The big cans, we use the wooden sticks you get from Home Depot. All right. Let's see if I can get two coats on this. I might not be able to get two coats on this tonight. The cabinet part, I got two coats on. It's getting late in the day and I might not be able to get the second coat on. So I can always do that tomorrow. So I'll leave the 
masking tape on here. Now, we'll put this this way. Just hit the uh, parts that didn't show from the other side here. Okay. Now, we'll take a look over here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. It looks like I might have a couple of Spots here. This one that was real rusty, I'm having a little hard time covering it. The rest of them look good. We're going to let it set here with the weight on it. Till the sun goes down. When the cows come home. When the cows come home, we'll put that in the shed and um, put some kind of dirt in there. Okay. Um, we'll probably bundle this. Over here. Now this is this is cut evenly. There's no overhang of the um, the material, so I'll just bondo this. I only got a quarter inch to fill in, and then I'll worry about the feet. And I don't think I don't think these are screwed in. I think they got like one of them rivets that uh, go into the wood, and you break it all out trying to get them out. Now there's no slot or anything in them. You know what? I think these are good enough. And you got two here, and you got two in the lid over there. So I think I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Well, I think we're going to end this video, guys and gals. We're going to end it now, and uh, when I get back on this project, I'll bundle that. I'll probably uh, make a video of it. So until we meet again. As I always say, whatever it is you do, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Because you may just like it today, and you may want to do it again tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.